Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremlin News at 5. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Hey, happy Friday, everyone. We have made it through another week and the weekend is in sight. We are continuing to practice social distancing here at Kremlin 2, so I'm broadcasting from my living room here on the South Hill. Meantime, our Whitney Ward back at the Krem2 studio. Whitney? Hallelujah for Friday, right? I mean, this work from home thing is not all it's cracked up to be. Good to see you. I'm glad we finally made it. Let's get right to the top headlines tonight. The CDC is recommending that all Americans do wear masks when out in public. President Trump is stressing, though, this is optional. He says it's just a recommendation right now. The CDC has added new guidelines saying that you should be covering your face, though, with at least a cloth mask in places like the grocery store or the pharmacy. But it's very important the president is not recommending that you use surgical or medical grade masks because those need to be reserved for the people who are on the front lines, the doctors, the nurses, and the first responders. The CDC is recommending that Americans wear a basic cloth or fabric mask that can be either purchased online or simply made at home, probably material that you'd have at home. These face coverings can be easily washed or reused. President Trump announcing those new guidelines today. He said, though, he will not be wearing one. We also want to point out these new mask guidelines do not interfere at all with those social distancing guidelines. That means even if you're wearing a mask, you still need to stay at home. You still need to stay six feet away from anyone else. That should be practiced regardless. Spokane Public Schools announcing they will remain closed at least until May 4th. That is following Governor Jay Inslee's stay at home order, which was extended just yesterday. In a press release, SPS says the distribution of free meals will continue. And starting Monday on April 6th, parents will be able to pick up those grab and go meals without the student present. New at five tonight, Spokane police officers say they have received two different complaints from people who are being approached by someone impersonating a police officer. They say that in both of these cases, the fake officer was asking people whether they were an essential worker and even pulled one driver over. Spokane police say the department is not asking people right now about their working status during this pandemic. They say people are not required to have any kind of paperwork to prove that they are an essential worker. So please be on the lookout. Right now, we know there are nearly 7,000 cases of coronavirus ac across Washington. The death toll statewide now 284. Here in Spokane County, you can see 194 co confirmed cases and seven people have died. In Grant County, the numbers are also increasing now 68 confirmed cases. Across the state line in Idaho, the Panhandle Health District is now reporting 37 cases in Kootenai County and one case in Bonner County. The death toll now at nine among 814 total cases. So right now, projections used by the White House Coronavirus Task Force estimate the state of Washington could see more than 900 COVID-19 deaths before the end of this outbreak. Regina Ahn is joining us live from the newsroom now with more information on that. Regina. Well, Whitney, this is all in an effort to inform and educate people. The Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation, which is part of the University of Washington Medicine program, has a COVID-19 forecast published on its website. The projections are broken down by state and include estimated hospital and ICU beds that are needed how many people die every day, and of course, outlooks of the number of deaths we could see. The estimates for Washington say the state will hit the peak of its curve for the deaths per day on April 9th. At that time, they're estimating 22 people from Washington will die from COVID-19 every day. The number of deaths per day is expected to begin slowly decreasing, though, by April 17th. IHME says the state will need 350 ICU beds while only 341 are available. That leads to a shortage of nine beds. This projects this projects also that a total of 978 people will die from COVID-19 in Washington by August 4th, 2020. They estimate that the final death in the state, though, would come at the beginning of June. The peak date for hospital demand in Washington will be April 11th, according to that same study. And Spokane County Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz expressed concerns on Monday about the spread of the disease on the east side of the state. He estimated that COVID-19 could peak in late April or even into May for Spokane County specifically. Live in the newsroom tonight, Regina on back to you. 
Sobering information, Regina. Thank you very much. And for the latest about this coronavirus here locally and beyond, all you have to do is text the word FACTS to 509-448-2000, and we will immediately send you a link to your phone with the latest updates. So grocery stores all across the Spokane area still trying to recover from these last few weeks. So, Mark, have you had any trouble finding anything? I still can't find toilet paper. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no issues finding food per se, but like paper products, like toilet paper, as you mentioned, paper towels, you know, Clorox wipes or cleaners, those still seem to be sold out at all the stores that I go to. As Creme 2, Shana Waltower tells us, stores are trying to restock. They tell us it could take a couple weeks, though, for them to be fully restocked. We basically emptied the reserves of all of our suppliers. For more than a week now, if you've tried buying items like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, cleaning wipes, those items didn't get crossed off your list. People really started to do a little bit of panicking. The good news is that things have really started to level out. Jeff Phillips, CEO of Rosar Supermarket, says manufacturers, store suppliers, and truck drivers have been working overtime to get these items back on the shelves. We're on our way to recovery. But he says restocking isn't as easy as just putting in more orders. The materials required to make many paper products take longer to gather and manufacture than other items. One of the challenges is that the raw materials to make those things, once you empty the supply chain totally, then you've got to worry about getting raw materials back to the manufacturer in order for them to actually produce that product. He says many manufacturers are making mostly toilet paper and cleaning products instead of their usual spread of items. To make sure that we're getting the items that we really need and maybe not so much of the variety of items that we are used to. And this has helped. Some days you've probably found a few packages of toilet paper on the shelves, but only to see them cleared out a day later. Phillips says it could be several weeks before we see a full supply of items on all shelves around the area. We still have a few things that um, uh, are still sort of trickling in uh, and we have some challenges around those things. But um, the good news is that we are getting trucks every single day. While crews have figured out the logistics of restocking these items, Phillips says you can help with the process. And if people will return to buying sort of just what they need for their immediate needs, then we will get the supply chain back in shape much, much faster. In Spokane, Shana Waltower, Cram 2 News. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the weather because, man, what a week it's been. We've seen snow, rain, sunshine, just about everything this week in Spokane. Let's get over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry. He's about a, a mile away from me on the South Hill at his home as well. And, Tom, the weekend is here and warmer weather, it's in sight too. Yeah, thankfully, you know, uh, when I get a, around to my uh, uh, seven-day forecast, which I'll do in just about 10 minutes, I've got temperatures by the middle of next week actually climbing into the low 60s. So we've got better weather ahead. But again, it was another day of below average temperatures, and it certainly got windy. Come with me, if you will, to the Storm Tracker 2 remote uh, weather window. We take a look outside, and we've got some blue sky out there, but the trees are blowing still. So we've got wind gusts up to about uh, 35 miles per hour. Here's a look at the Doppler radar, and you can see we've got the rain showers occurring across areas of eastern Washington and northern Idaho. Also, those snow showers in the panhandle of Idaho as well. Excuse me. Uh, so, and we'll look for more of that to occur then uh, through about eight o'clock tonight. And then I think Saturday is a dry day. And then we'll look for uh, another chance of snow showers uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. 43 right now. Here's a look at your weekend forecast. 50 Saturday. I said it'd be mostly dry. 49 on Sunday with some uh, uh, snow showers early in the morning and then also again towards dinner hour on Sunday. We'll check your seven day forecast all coming up in a few minutes. Back to you, Whitney. Look. All right, looking forward to that, Tom. Thank you very much. The coronavirus pandemic is hitting Habitat for Humanity hard. Locally, there are 40 families who are working on their homes, but now those projects are in limbo as construction has halted. Krem 2's Brandon Jones has more now on how the nonprofit is trying to move forward. This right here is one of the houses that Habitat for Humanity was revitalizing, but as of now, what normally would be working hours is closed off and they don't know when they'll be able to get back out here to finish things up. Over the last 33 years, Habitat for Humanity has put 330 Spokane families into an affordable home. That's nearly 1,500 individual people that have a place to shelter right now through this pandemic. There are blessings in this, and then there's also, you know, this pretty shocking reality jolt. 
Commercial and residential construction has been deemed non-essential during Governor Inslee's stay-at-home order. That means some people counting on a home have to wait longer. We have over 40 um, applicant families that are waiting for um, their home to be complete. Because Habitat for Humanity operates with volunteers, there's no telling when construction will resume. There's also the worry about how this will impact the housing market in Spokane and how they'll be able to assist their current homeowners. You know, we're trying to shift gears and see how can we do a virtual experience where our donors can still feel like connected to us, even yeah. though we are all safely social distancing. This time of the year is normally when they're fundraising and have their annual lunch in for donors. Instead of canceling, they're asking for donations online. The hope is to raise for the other side of this pandemic and help get more families settled. The longer the order is in place, the more the organization is worried about a housing crisis. We have to keep that faith to make sure that um, the next families um, who were already in a housing crisis, who may be experiencing here shortly a housing emergency, that we can't let them down. From Spokane, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News.